Mosi Molifati Lima Oli Mo Sing 
Start in two minutes.
Thank you for joining and welcome to today's service. I hope we are all well and uh, the Lord has kept us and sustained us. And as we begin uh, Sabbath, which is about to uh, dawn, we hope and pray that everyone is well. And we are finishing up those last preps and uh, you are getting ready to enjoy fellowship with uh, your fellow brothers and sisters. Um, just to begin our program, may I ask that we close our eyes for prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for such an opportunity to come before your feet and learn from you. We appreciate all that you are doing into our lives. We appreciate the time that you spend at each and every second to build our characters to be fit for heaven. We thank you for such wonderful messages that are coming at a very critical and opportune time for us to take advantage of as we end the year. May we end the year with you strong and with better relationships between you and uh, with each other here on earth. We thank you for your grace and for your love, and we pray that you guide and be with the preacher as he preaches. May you help us to be able to understand and listen and conceptualize all that you have prepared for us today. We humble ourselves before thee in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank you and we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you for that. Um. We are on day number six, and we this is the last day for our program as we continue with, with the stewardship week of prayer. We hope and pray that all of us have been blessed and we have invited friends, fellow members uh, to share of the same blessings that we have been receiving and how we pray that each and every one of us be there tomorrow and uh, we come and listen and share and share our experiences of what has been happening throughout the whole week. May we be blessed as we'll be handing over to our brother, uh, Mr. Conrad, um, who, who will be uh, 
leading us through the service for today. And uh, this is our last day uh, for our virtual. We are meeting tomorrow, but uh, we'll uh, mention the announcements immediately after the, the service. But for now, let us uh, fellowship with one another. Let us enjoy. Um, and let's prayerfully uh, pray that the Lord lead and direct our lives. But before he starts, um, we'll play a few more videos that our kids have been producing on a daily basis to tell us about how they put God first uh, in their lives. So immediately after that, uh, my brother, it will be over to you. May we be richly blessed by the program. Amen. At. Hello everyone, my name is Shatuza Borupule from Philadelphia Church in Botswana. Today I'm going to tell you how I put God first. Personally, I pray five times a day. When I wake up, when I eat my breakfast, when I go to school, when I'm at school, and when I come back. To God gave us his only begotten son, so whoever believes him should have everlasting life. Thank you everyone. These are some ways that I make sure to put God first. I pray every single day. I make sure that I don't pray only in the morning or only in the evening. I make sure that I have my own personal time with God. I will put God first. Good day, church. Today I'll be telling you how I put God first. There are many ways to put God first, such as praying, reading your Bible, and sharing the word. I prefer to pray. Before I wake up, I pray. Before I eat, I pray. Before I travel, I pray. Before I write an exam, I pray. That's how I put God first. Church. My name is Alba Kobabadinyana of Philadelphia Church. I put God first by starting and ending my day with prayer. I also put God first by taking every struggle or problem to Him. Matthew 6 verse 33 reads, put, But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all things shall be added to you. Amen. 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 Over to you, Mr. Conrad. Uh, sorry for that. Uh, thank you for uh, that welcome. I greet you everyone in the name of the Lord. It's been a good week. The Lord has been blessing us and leading us through the various mes messages which uh, I've been blessed I hope you have been blessed as well. So this will be our last uh, meeting before we part, I guess, for this program. I am excited to meet you tomorrow at Philadelphia Church. Let us uh, start today's talk. All right, uh, making windows in heaven. This will be our talk for today. 
This will be our talk for today. Uh, but uh, before I start, let me just pray. Let me just pray. Let us close our eyes. Heavenly Father, as we begin to share this message with your people, I ask that your spirit may be upon us, that Lord, we may not just be coming here to listen, but we may actually hearken to the words that we hear and pray for your assistance that we may implement it upon our lives. May you help me as well as I speak this ways that I may be exemplary, exemplary Lord, by actually doing these things that I'm saying. That at the end, I may be blessed as well as the rest of Philadelphia Church. Be with the technologies that we are using, that, Lord, we are not hindered in any way. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. <clears throat> All right, uh, we will be considering the message of the book of Malachi. Malachi, if you prefer, American. Uh, that is... That will be our text of consideration. Um, the message that I'm going to share, as it is obvious, will be about tithe and offering. I will not be going into the details of how to tithe, why to tithe, and all those things, the technical issues behind uh, tithe and offering, because I believe we we know those. What I just want to do is an encouragement because I know that it is not, we are failing at this, not because we do not know, but uh, sometimes the pressures of this life and uh, temptations, we get tempted and we get swept away by the snares of the devil that, you know, sometimes all we need is encouragement from the word of God to remind us of those things that we knew but had forgotten. So the words come from the book of Malachi, uh, chapter 3, verse 8. Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, wherein have we robbed thee? In tithe and offering. Ye are cast with a curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that ye may that they may be meet in mine house, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. So it comes as a warning, it comes as a promise. Uh, that is the message of the book of Malachi. Now, Ellen White has this to say. <clears throat> uh, this message has lost none of its force. It is just as fresh in its importance as God's gifts are fresh and continual. There is no difficulty in understanding our duty in the light of this message given through God's holy prophet. We are not left to stumble along in darkness and disobedience. The truth is plainly stated and it can be clearly understood by all who wish to be honest in the sight of God. A tithe of all our income is the Lord's. He lays his hand upon that portion, which he has specified that we shall return to him and says, I will allow you 
to use my bounties after you have laid aside the tenth and have come before me with gifts and offering. <clears throat> uh, this passage, brethren, though it's written by a prophet, uh, it is not a prophetic message. Uh, it is not prophecy. The text is clear as we see it, that we are to bring the tithes of God into the storehouse, that the Lord requires a tenth part of our income. It is not a, a difficult message, as also Ellen White says, that this truth, this truth is plainly stated and clearly understood by all who are honest in the sight of God. Sometimes when we fall from the faith, we come up with uh, new interpretations to try and dodge the clear and plain truth of God. We try to find ways of excusing ourselves, but anyone who is honest in the sight of God will agree that this scripture is one of the clearest in the Bible. We do not need to hold, uh, uh, to draw charts, trying to interpret uh, the book of Malachi, uh, this chapter that deals with, with child or this verses. <clears throat> it is a serious thing to embezzle the Lord's goods to practice robbery towards God. For in so doing, the perceptions become perverted and the heart hardened. How barren is the religious experience? How clouded is the understanding of one who loves not God with pure and selfish love and who fails therefore to love his neighbor as himself? Uh, usually we underestimate or it is Satan's intentions that, you know, after we fall into sin, we tend to belittle the sin that we are in so that we excuse ourselves or we escape the guilt that we will feel and therefore continue in that sin. But we are told by Ellen White here that it is a serious thing to embezzle the lost goods. It is a serious thing before God not to return tithe or to use the tithe of the Lord. Uh, it affects us. Uh, Ellen White here says that <clears throat> our perceptions will become perverted and our heart will become hardened. Uh, you know, robbers, this is not talking about theft. The Bible says, will a man rob God? You know, theft is when you still, is that kind of crime where you still when somebody else is not looking, the owner is not looking. <laughs> but robbery is when you are actually taking those goods by force. That is what we are doing because God does not sleep. He is omnipresent. He is all powerful. He's always looking. His eyes is upon us 24 seven. So when we commit this practice, we actually harden our heart. Uh, People who practice armed robbery, you know that they are very dangerous criminals. They usually they are armed when the people who commit robbery are armed. You don't commit a robbery just uh, <clears throat> coming without being prepared to harm the owner of the goods. So the Bible uses the strong language because. It is a serious crime. We come prepared with that cold heart when we 
uh, put our hands upon the purse and utilize that which belongs to God. We come with weapons. I don't know what kind of weapons uh, you are carrying in order to embezzle the Lord. But this is what the Bible tells us, that it is a robbery and it is a very serious crime before the Lord. It actually shows that we do not love God and that we are selfish and we do not love our neighbor as ourselves because God does not need the tithe. This is the money that uh, is actually going to be used to sponsor the work of God. So we are actually uh, committing a crime of the highest order. <clears throat> the last grace day will reveal to them and to the whole universe what good might have been, might have been done had they not followed their selfish inclinations and thus robbed God in tithes and offerings. They might have placed their treasure in the bank of heaven and preserved it in bags that works not old. But instead of doing this, they expended it upon themselves and their children. Uh, sorry about that. Um, yeah, let me continue. They might have placed their treasure in the bank of heaven and preserved it in bags that works not all. But instead of doing this, they expended it upon themselves and their children and seemed to feel afraid that the Lord would get any of their money or their influence. And thus they met with eternal loss. Let them contemplate the consequence of withholding from God. The slothful servant who puts not his Lord's money to usury loses an eternal inheritance in the kingdom of glory. So as we can see that uh, this is quite a, a serious matter, uh, beloved. So I know sometimes uh, we find ourselves uh, being pressed. Uh, sometimes we overcommit our minds <clears throat> because of the pressures of this world. Uh, but you know, we can never run out of excuses. There is always a reason if you need one to disobey. And there are also reasons to obey. And the Lord knew this. That is why uh, he actually tells us that there is a reward for obedience. And also he mentions a reward also of disobedience, which is a curse. A curse will be upon us if we do not return the tithe of the Lord. Uh, the savings of this world will never secure our kingdom or will never secure our happiness rather <clears throat> in this world. That is why we are encouraged that uh, we should place our treasure in the bank of heaven uh, where it will be preserved in bags that do not wax old. You'd find somebody over committing the salary with uh, uh, pension schemes, uh, uh, life covers, all of those things that, you know, they do them in order to secure the future. 
And then at the end, there is nothing left. They do not have money to actually return the tithe of the lot. So when you look at your pay slip and you see all of those things, what does it say? Because usually we do, we spend most of our money to actually secure our livelihood on this earth. What are we saying about the heavenly kingdom? Does it reveal to us that we do not care about the heavenly? Because sometimes uh, our profession, you know, when we profess with the mouth, we say a lot of things, but our actions are the ones which we will tell where our real faith is. Because uh, Christ says that, you know, where your money is, that is where your heart will be. Where you invest your treasures, that is where your heart will be. So unless we, we start to show our real faith, we go and introspect and look at our finances that do we have anything that we really spent or invest in heaven to show that indeed we are not of this world. To defraud God is the greatest crime of which man can be guilty. And yet this sin is deep and widespread. So defrauding God is a very popular thing. You know, when you look at the percentages and the churches, you find that um, sometimes it's less than 10% of the church that actually are consistent and retaining tithe and offering. In fact, when it comes to offering, it's, it's worse because somehow we think that the tithe, we really must retain it because the amount is even stipulated that it's 10%. But when it comes to offering, which God has not uh, actually put uh, any number on, uh, we tend not to, to do anything about it. But uh, giving God starts with offering. It is not the tithe because uh, tithe was never ours to begin with. So we do not say we have given anything to God after we have uh, returned the tithe. So because this uh, crime is uh, deep and widespread, it means that, you know, our churches are, I become areas of crime, you know. This is actually, we are become like mafias, uh, as believers, because this is organized crime. We plan to defraud God on a monthly basis if we are employed. Uh, husband and wife, they sit together and make that decision to actually rob God. Uh, we have cartels in our homes, in our churches. Uh, heaven looks upon us as criminals of the highest order. And we do this thing day by day and month by month and defraud God and deny our fellow men the opportunity of hearing the gospel. May God help us to to repent of this crime. But uh, <clears throat> God does not stop there. Uh, he encourages us 
Malachi uses figurative language. Open for you the windows of heaven to describe the outcome of retaining a complete tithe to the Lord. Previously, Moses used the expression, the windows of heaven were opened in Genesis 7, 11, to describe the heavy rain that occurred during the 40 days of the flood. Elsewhere, he uses an almost similar expression, I will rain bread from heaven, <clears throat> in Exodus 16, verse 4, to refer to man, the daily sustenance uh, of Israel for 40 years. Open for you the windows of heaven conveys the idea of divine initiative, abundance, and material things. So God says, if you are going to be faithful, in fact, he says, try me and see. You know, uh, God will pour out blessings upon you. He will open the windows of heaven, which signifies abundance to everyone who will actually be obedient in retaining the tithe and the offering. Uh, he will cause an overflow of blessings upon our way. So, but, uh, you know, God's blessings does not come in uniform packages. Uh, you know, God does not mean that you will be rich when you return time. Uh, and uh, when we talk of blessings, blessings are different. They are not always in monetary terms. You know, uh, the evangelical or the, the, the Christian dome in general has reduced uh, the blessings of God to material possessions. You know, when people talk about being blessed, they talk of money, of material things. But, uh, you know, that is very low, an estimate of what a blessing of God is. So blessings does not come in uniform packages. They vary from one individual to another. Some want beg for bread. Yeah. Uh, just like it says in Psalms 37, verse 25, you know, sometimes uh, God will just help you to, to sustain you, that at least you don't beg. You have, your daily meat will be secured. You will not have abundance, but you will also not starve. While others will produce abundant work. Ellen White explains about this diverse reality. Some will have an hundredfold in this life and in the world to come life everlasting, but all will not receive their hundredfold in this life because they cannot bear it. Let's have confidence in God's wisdom. So we will not all have the substance that we desire because some of us really uh, some are in church and are believers because somehow they are poor or they lack. If they were to receive the kind of money that they dream of, we will never see them in church or they will step over everyone. That is the kind of people we are. We see people who have, who had suffered before, struggled, you know, when God blesses them, when they finally make it uh, in life, they, they, they get to have the silver and the gold. Uh, they live as though they never knew poverty. Instead of now understanding where they came from and uh, being sympathetic with others and becoming generous to help other people who are in their situation, they become something else that is what human nature does and sometimes god withholds uh, certain blessings from us because we are not fit to bear them so that promise does not mean that uh, we will realize it in the same proportion 
just like gifts, spiritual gifts are not given in the same proportion. Everyone is given according to their ability. That is the wisdom of God. So it also offers us God's protection scheme. Malachi 3.11 says, uh, uh, And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he will not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. So God will protect our our treasures when we are faithful and tithes and offering. <clears throat> Life has taught us that it is not enough to be blessed, but to preserve and enjoy our blessings. The prophet Micah describes one consequence of unfaithfulness. You shall sow, but not reap. You shall tread the olives, but not anoint thyself, yourself with oil and make sweet wine, but not drink wine. Malachi, Micah 6, 15. These are frustrating scenarios. So sometimes we uh, get these frustrations in life. Uh, we think, we ask ourselves, what's really going on in our lives? You know, we are trying this, it's not working, trying that. Uh, sometimes, it's just because we have not faithfully returned tithe and offering faithfully. You know, we may be registered as tithe, those who tithe are in the church books, but we only return a part of the money. We are not faithful because God sees uh, events in our lives will show. God's protection is much needed for our unstable time. God is our protection and our strength. He always helps in times of trouble. So we will not be afraid even if the earth shakes or the mountains fall into the sea, even if the oceans roar and foam or the mountains shake and the region, at the raging sea. In a world where the stock market is swinging, war is raging, COVID-19 and monkeypox are threatening, and the cost of living is skyrocketing, it is not, is it not best to place ourselves and everything we have under the care of the all-powerful God? By tithing, we enroll into God's protection plan. So we live in uncertain times. Uh, we can see, everyone can see that something uh, stupendous is about to happen. As Christians, we understand it as uh, the end of times. The Lord is near to come. There is widespread fear anyway. We do not know what will happen the next day when we wake up. Is it not the time to make things right with God? At least those very things that it is in our power to do. Other things we can pray and ask the Lord to help us. But, you know, things such as returning tithe a faithful tithe to the Lord that we can do as we plead to help, to ask the Lord to help us overcome other issues because these are very fundamental things of the faith that we really ought not to be struggling uh, about in the times that we are living in. We are in a time where we should be dealing with the deep things of the heart. Not such things as tithes and offerings. This we can sort out. If you, you can just decide today, tomorrow we are going to church, it's month end. You can decide to 
pass by the ATM machine and withdraw. Or just go tonight. You know the tithe that you are supposed to return. And you can agree, uh, see, decide the, the amount of offering. This you can do. And tomorrow you bring your tithe and offering to the Lord. Because we have more things to battle. We have spoke some of the stuff during the week. Uh, we have issues of the heart, forgiveness. Uh, we have pride. You know, we have a lot of emotional baggages to, to dispel. We need to find peace with God. We need to overcome appetite, uh, sexual desires, and other things, hatred. Let's sort out this one, brethren. The Lord can help us. And I believe he has ahead us. May you have a pleasant Sabbath. May the Lord bless us. Amen. 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 Thank you for that uh, wonderful message, my brother. Indeed, we need the Lord in our lives. Um, we need the Lord in our lives. And uh, we need to do that which is right. Uh, I don't want to say anything. I don't want to destroy the message. It was just a straight to the point message of uh, us responding to God's love through what he has put in our pockets. Um, at this point in time, I'll ask my two elders, um, starting with Elders Holody, then uh, Mazonde, to put us before the Lord, um, specifically in relation to the message that we've just received and to pray for the program that will be happening tomorrow, um, that the Lord may grant us his mercies and that all these things that we are learning may truly reflect in how the church uh, looks in terms of uh, finances. Um, I'll also... Uh, at this point in time, entertain if there are any prayer requests uh, that uh, we have. Um, if there are any prayer requests, you may just type on the WhatsApp chat, on the, on the chat there, either on Facebook or here on Zoom, or either also at WhatsApp also, you may just uh, write there. But I just want uh, my two elders to, when they pray, to zone in and focus on the message for today. So I don't see any chats. Let's continue to pray for the preacher. Let's continue to pray for our children. That as we pray and they receive these messages, may they also be encouraged that they do that which is right uh, in their lives. Uh, Mr. Sokolodi, when you are ready, you can pray. Immediately after that, uh, Mr. Mazonde will take over with the prayer. Amen. Amen. We come before you, Lord. We humble ourselves. As we come before you, Father, thanking you for the gift of life. 
this whole week, Lord, you have blessed us with your main servant, Mr. Mulemuchi, to come and share with us reviving ways, ways of God that brings us into our thoughts because we keep on running this way and and that way as we are always running after things, Father. But we have had a moment to pause in the evenings and be refreshed with the sweet words of God, comforting words of God that remind us a number of things that we are faced with in life and that we tend to forget that there is God in every situation that we are in. And then a lot of times we end up doing things in our own way, walking in our own way, forget it that we cannot walk with any strength if we walk alone. We are only bound to crash somewhere along the way. We want to thank the Lord for his man servant. And we want to talk about talking about all the messages that we have he has shared with us and revived us with especially the one of today on the tithe retaining of the tithe and the offerings we tend to whenever we are blessed with anything we tend to forget to know where it originates from and tend to think that any blessing that we come across is something that has just come from our effort, but not remembering that it is not our, about our effort that we get to have that which we can eat on its daily day, but it is about the Lord's blessings that are always abounding on us. Even when we don't return the, <clears throat> the tithe, he's always patient and enduring. And we must not get used to see that we have continually been blessed and nothing has happened. And then we think it is all about our efforts. We have to be afraid whenever we see ourselves <clears throat> in that, we have to fear the Lord, knowing that he's the provider. And then at any time, he can cut that blessing and it will be very painful. Lord, we pray that may we internalize these ways and remember you at all times. Whatever we happen to get in our hands, we must kneel down and pray for it in thanksgiving. And remember the God's part to set aside and then spend hours. And also remember to be, to be thankful to the Lord and give offerings, not to deceive ourselves and say when we have taken out the Lord's tithe, we have uh, given something to the Lord. Because that is just what we are retaining, which is mandatory belonging to him. But we should know now, see that which we give with our hearts, that will show how much we are thankful to the Lord. Thank you, Father, for these ways. And as we enter into the Sabbath, may we, may we be blessed, our Father. 
And may we be thankful to you that here we are, we are all we are all alive, we are all in good health. Remembering that others have not seen the sunrise of today and others as usual come the weekend, some will be already being buried, having not seen the this week, Lord. Therefore, when we see ourselves waking up every day, we must always thank the Lord in every way that we can. Lord, we pray and thank you for all these things in the mighty name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we come before your throne. We are bowing our heads in shame. We have done things, Lord, that uh, we are not supposed to be doing as Christians. Because, Lord, we understand that uh, our goal is to be heaven-bound. But how do we give ourselves a promise of such if we rob you daylight? The message that we just got today, Lord, let it be a light, let it be the beginning of good things that will come from your children. We know Satan always brings this and this to disrupt us, but we want to have the hearts, the hearts that are in those that are consistent. We know, Lord, that uh, we don't have that strength. This is why this moment to say, Lord, give us the strength, give us the courage. Close all thoughts that are negative. Let us face all the problems that we have, but remember that you are there. We need to give back to whatever belongs to you. Bless Philadelphia Church, Lord. Bless our pastor, our preacher. Bless everyone. And the, the lesson for this week, let it be a light that will remain in our hearts and give us the momentum, the action that, you know, we should not be shaken henceforth. Be with us as we enter the hours of the Sabbath. Give us the joyous heart. Be with us tomorrow in our service and let the encouraging words put the last nail in our heads so that at the end of the day, Lord, we do what is right. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you very much, my three elders, for the prayers. Um, we really thank and appreciate each and every one of you who managed to join and avail themselves for this meeting. And how we pray that uh, may we not leave these messages the same. May they empower, may they change us to become uh, better candidates for heaven. Tomorrow, we are meeting at Philadelphia SDA Church in the village, um, just on your way to a river walk. Uh, by the last traffic of river walk, you turn left, you just go straight, you see the church on your left. Um, the service starts at nine o'clock. You are all invited to come fellowship with us physically. You are also invited to uh, Join if you are far away online. Uh, we'll be live streaming the whole service online on our Facebook page, Facebook platform. Please do join us and uh, fellowship with us. And uh, we have an afternoon service also that uh, uh, will start at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. You are all also invited for the afternoon service. 
there is a jam packed of uh, a powerful presentation in the afternoon that our preacher has for us tomorrow. Uh, for those who can just pack uh, some lunch so that you can have some lunch uh, immediately after service so that you don't get me to go home, uh, so that we fellowship with one another. Um, may we richly uh, enjoy the blessings of the Sabbath and may the Lord help us and keep us uh, in all that we do in our lives. Uh, we may take a short prayer, a good night prayer, as we dismiss to our different places. Um, maybe if I may find out. Uh, Alice is uh, back on there. All right, if it's not, uh, okay, we'll just uh, close in prayer. Let us pray. Thank you, Father, for the message. Thank you for the service. Thank you for everything. Please be with us this night as we rest and sleep. Guide our thoughts and our minds that they be directed towards you. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. 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 Thank you amen. And, and good night. Uh, amen. Let us meet amen. tomorrow. Amen. Thank you very happy much and have Lord. a blessed Thank night. Amen. Amen. All right, happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath.